Ministry of Information and Communication Technology, MICT, today convened a strategic planning retreat in Ventuk to develop the ministry's strategic plan for the next two years. Now, the retreat is being attended by MICT officials, regional heads, deputy directors responsible for planning at all the 14 regional councils and ICT state-owned enterprises such as Telecom Namibia, Namibia Press Agency, New Era Publication Corporation, the Communication Regulatory Authority of Namibia, Powercom, MTC, and the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation. Now, to give us more on the matter, is the Executive Director in the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology, that's Dr. Audrin Mate. Dr. Mate, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Serena. Well, briefly, Dr. Mate, uh, speak to us on the current strategic plan that exists and uh, whether it has been able to be implemented fully. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation and to get the opportunity to answer some of your questions. Uh, as you know, the current strategic plan that we are using now, its lifespan ended uh, last year in March, at which point the expectation uh, was that we will draw up another five year strategic plan that will run for five years. Uh, but that has not happened because there were some uh, delays in finalizing the NDP 6. So we were then asked to continue from uh, previous years, um, pr previous uh, strategic plan. And now what we are doing is to develop a, a two year blueprint until 2025, when uh, we expect that uh, NDP 6 will be completed and then it will take effect uh, from that uh, year on. So we are essentially preparing uh, a roadmap now of over the next two days to to close the gap between uh, 2023 and 2025. So we understand that reviewing the ministry's strategic plan is aimed at, you know, allowing institutions to track progress towards goals and key performance indicators. With that said, how has the various or how have the various institutions who fall under this ministry of uh, ICT then been performing in adherence to the existing uh, plan? Indeed, uh, we will just complete the, the answer to the first question. The, the, the last uh, strategic plan, we have uh, implemented uh, almost about 64%, and the year is not over until 31st of March. There's a good chance that we will pick up progress uh, with regards to implementation of various initiatives that may account for, for the deficit uh, of 25%. So the idea now is, we have invited, as you correctly said in the in introduction, uh, various uh, public enterprises that have some kind of relationship with our ministry so that uh, the then influence the direction of the next two years, but also for us to gauge uh, the appetite from their end with regards to what it is that they regard as uh, top tier uh, earners that, we, that may find way into a strategic plan. At the end of the day, the idea is that uh, we must not uh, throw down the strategy in their throats, but really we need to take ownership, all of us, together with the public enterprises, so that that implementation, is, uh, the implementation therefore becomes easy because this blue, the, the blueprint will have something that will be agreed to by all the stakeholders that are involved. At the same time, it gives us a sense of direction in which public enterprises are going to say, uh, whatever it is, there have to be some kind of strategic alignment with the broader uh, government agenda. Public enterprises, by their nature, public, it's that they are uh, state-owned enterprises. Therefore, they have responsibility to fulfill a government um, agenda. So it, it helps us in that sense to gauge where they are uh, with regards to the implementation uh, of what they were tasked to do. So we, we then look at how, what ha has been done and what is left still to be done. So we can work together to find solutions of the challenges that we will be faced with during the period under review. So share with us uh, some of the issues of concerns uh, that were raised at the workshop. You, you know, um, I think part of the challenges now is uh, uh, we have very good uh, ideas, but sometimes they don't go through because of a, a lack of, of, of finance. And this is not to say that uh, it's only us, you know, everybody else uh, should appreciate the level in which the global economy is now. So I think we should be able to give leeway and, and change strategy when finance does not allow. So that's part of, of, of the challenges. The, the, the other will be 
uh, a shortage of specialized skills, especially in the ICT uh, law. It takes us a very long time to develop policies, legislation that addresses issues like cybercrime, uh, issues of data policy, because there are not very many people in our country that possesses those skills. When you do, it will be limited pool of people to the extent that uh, they are already overwhelmed by the things that they are doing other than what the ministry requires us to do. And we, we are very grateful to the Minister of Justice for this because they continue to avail the very scarce resources that they have for us to be able to, uh, to, to do this. So th those are some of the challenges. Obviously, a country like Namibia uh, from uh, it's 800, over 824,000 square kilometers, laying down infrastructure can become very complex. If, it, if, if you compare that to a country like uh, Mauritius, which is 79 uh, kilometers uh, in, in length, then 14 kilometers in breadth. So it, it's basically from here on the other side of Okahanja, one country will be done. So it's easy to lay down infrastructure. So for example, if you're talking about uh, inter internet connectivity, uh, cellular phone signal, radio coverage, and television coverage, it's easy for those countries. But ours is, is, is massive. So what we do is we, we make a distinction between population coverage and geographic coverage. Geographic coverage is when you say, uh, the entire country, irrespective of where you are, you are able to pick up either radio signal or cellular, uh, cellular phone signal. Whereas population coverage, we lay infrastructure where people actually reside. So there's no point, this is to say, for example, you will not have uh, network coverage between or Congo and Kuroke. I'm just giving an example, it could be any place. Sure. So that's really uh, the formula. The, 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 what is desirable is actually to have a geographic coverage so that at any given moment you, you have a uh, breakdown you are able to uh, pick up the phone and call for assistance, or you can listen to radio at any given moment. So those are the challenges that we, we, we are dealing with, and the, the two days now uh, to figure out how best to address those and still uh, make sure that uh, the, the other areas of priority don't suffer. Right. So MICT is currently taking stock of uh, the areas that require attention for the next two years, as you are saying. Can you share some of these uh, uh, focal points? It, 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 at this point in time, we're not yet at the end. We'll be finishing tomorrow, uh, uh, God willing. So at which point we will then be in a position to say what it is that becomes uh, key uh, ministerial priorities over the next two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I can confidently tell you now that uh, the Minister of ICT will be, will be make a statement sometime next week, probably on Thursday or Friday, to announce what our focus are going to be in the next two years. So I, I think if you hold your horse just for the next few hours and maybe days, and we'll be able to get to a point where your question will be asked, will be answered uh, satisfactorily. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Uh, how best do you believe that the strategic plan for the next two years uh, strengthens information and communication technology in the country? You know, we are comfortable with, with the discussion that are uh, ongoing now. The idea is, is to say that uh, the government communication gets to the rest of the country. And you can't talk about communication fully if the people at Impalila Island cannot listen to radio or watch television, so therefore they will miss what government is communicating. It could be another area. So this is what we are focusing to doing, to say how do we provide information to those that are not yet reached. For example, people in, in, in Winduk and other areas, they've access to 4G. If you get to Impalira, uh, they'll probably be working on, on 2G. Uh, so do you ensure that whereas those in, in Chumukwe or any other area, they have no access at all? Do you upgrade those who are already at 4G to 5G? 5G is going to be rolled out now. Or do you start for those who have nothing completely? So that's the way in which we have to approach this. So that by the time that uh, we say government is ready to roll out uh, information campaign, then everyone else must have access to information. Uh, we can't talk about access if uh, some people uh, are left behind. Uh, and, and this is very helpful. The president uh, just now uh, signed the access to information into law, which means that uh, we have to make steps not to ensure that uh, it's implemented. And once that is, is, now that it has been signed, it's actually you can demand information. Do we have the capacity to be able to do that? So this is really where, where, where we are seated to ensure that uh, technology supports the access to information uh, law so that uh, the, the broader Namibian public, they can benefit out of it. Right. 
So the minister today in his remarks stated that a strategic planning puts institutions in a position where they will be proactive rather than reactive. Can you kindly uh, expand on that? You know, most of the time, uh, some of our institutions, they found themselves that they're receiving and only having to defend as opposed to us uh, going on the offense. The minister was very clear uh, this morning to say, we can't be in a defensive mood uh, all the time. We have to go on the offense. Offense doesn't mean that we're going to, it's not a negative word. It only simply means that uh, we have to go, we have to be proactive to be the first ones to release information, even before we're asked, if we believe that information is the, the best interest uh, of the people. So we have to do that. And I know for a fact that there are many, many successes, uh, success stories out of government that are there waiting to be told. So we, this year is going to be one of the uh, issues that we'll be dealing with. How do we, we are, we are developing something called Government Information uh, uh, Index. In other words, we compile all the programs that are ongoing so that periodically we, uh, we inform the people about the progress in there. For example, if you, 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 you have a groundbreaking uh, ceremony for a school, do we keep quiet until the school is, uh, is fully uh, open? Or do we keep abreast to say, well, just wait two more months your learners will be able to go to school within the vicinity, uh, within the precinct of, of, of their homes. So that's really what you want to do. You want to go on offense as opposed to be on the defense. Right. Now, from, from the ministry's perspective, what should media houses do in order to be more involved uh, when it comes to the dissemination of information? You know, uh, one of uh, the core, at the, at, the, at the heart of journalism is to report uh, accurately, fairly and objectively. And we see that the sometimes distortion about what it is government uh, is doing. To give you a very good example, which is fresh, today there was a story, a headline in the new era that said something that the courses at UNAM, they're not accredited. And uh, I was just talking to the director of communications, uh, Dr. Grimo, just now to say, I didn't read, I didn't get a chance of reading uh, the paper. So the substance of the headline and, and, and uh, the, the headline and the substance of the story. You know, if you read the headline, you think that's actually true, but there's more meat that goes into that. So let's get to a point where uh, if the uh, stories uh, have a basis upon which uh, the, the, there's a negativity to it, give us a chance so that we can respond to it. It may very well be that there's something that government is doing uh, which is not right, but for you to go on, 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 on your on your offense without giving us the right of reply can easily distort what it is you're trying to communicate. We, we, we can have differences of opinion about many things about our country, but it is, there's a point where national interest must also define us. You have, uh, you, you watch CNN and BBC and Sky News, they are on offense uh, against the, the Russian government. But back home, this is not to say that they, have, uh, they don't have problems, because they agree that uh, our, our enemies is, is Russia. That's national interest uh, for them, right or wrong? Mm -hmm. So I think we, as a media also, there is that expectation from us to make the distinction. Obviously, when you are wrong, say so. But when you are right, say so. There's no need for, to, to always to be on offense when there are matters that we can easily clarify. So please contact us. Uh, you have seen, uh, beginning uh, last night, the Secretary to Cabinet was on a public service corner to explain what uh, the role of, of the Secretary of Cabinet is in relation to the broader government. You will have this uh, throughout the year. Every week there will be a government official coming to explain this. And then later, we will see that uh, we will have uh, cabinet briefings by uh, cluster ministers to explain uh, the work of those clusters in relation to the development agenda. So you will have plenty of time to ask all the questions that maybe you, you think you don't have opportunity to do so because all the ministers will get a chance to explain what they are doing. So that's our offense uh, from our side. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mate. Of course, uh, this retreat, we will be watching it closely because it's uh, something that uh, matters to us a lot as journalists. Thank you so very much Sonia, for your kind invitation. Thank you so much. Of course, uh, that is uh, Dr. Mate, Dr. Audrin Mate, who is the ED at the Ministry of uh, ICT, talking to us there about the strategic planning retreat in, that is taking place here in Ventuk to develop the ministry's strategic plan for the next two years.